Boom, a spontaneous, fucking momentary, just fucking life hacks video. Because I got enough and I got to do one of them. Just one of them. Just one of them. Just one of them. Chewbacca. Um, kinky clothes prep. This is very specific. But if you ever are tying someone up, someone you care about, um, for the love of God, make sure that you have all the clothes you want to take off them off or that they're wearing clothes you're willing to rip or cut. Because there was a situation. Hi. And uh, let's, uh, just the shirt could go up, and that was fine, but the pants, if the legs are tied in different places, it was impossible to get the, the, like the, the underwear off, and it was nice underwear, I couldn't. So it was a matter of disconnecting, it was bad. So if you're ever gonna play kinky tie-up games, make sure the person's either wearing shitty clothes that you can rip, or you've already taken those clothes off and then tied them up, because it's just awkward. That's the awkward part. It's like, oh damn it, you're still dressed. Um, now I wrote glass clean, but it's actually glasses clean. So this is gonna be a, that's actually a double. Cause I, what did I write? Glasses clean? Glass cleaner? Window glass, all right. So I got glasses clean and window glass. Glasses clean is how you clean your sunglasses. I'm cooking something and I can't fuck that up too bad. Here are my sunglasses. Or here's one pair of my sunglasses. And um, I don't know, how do you clean them? Wrong, wrong. Here's how you clean sunglasses. It's very specific and you may not be able to do it, but uh, you could try. It's kitchen sink, dish, dish, dish soap, rub the lenses with soap and water, rinse, soap and water and rinse, rub and rinse, rinse and rub, rinse and rub, get all the soap off, and then, uh, don't fucking touch it. Now I have the, this thing, the X3 Hurricane, which I use to dry it off. But if you have canned air, that's fine. I don't know if a hair, I guess a hair dryer would work, but the idea is not to evaporate the water, it's to blow it off. Because you, no matter what microfiber cloth or towel that you, blowing off your glasses, drying them with the blower, is the key that's the key that's the key get the soap good dish soap break up all the oils all the bad things that's literally boiling cheese now anyway we are a few minutes away from that being able to be shut off blow off the water you don't want it to evaporate off and you don't want it to cook you don't want it to evaporate off you want it to fucking blow off that's how you clean your sunglasses, or regular glasses, or any glasses that you're wearing on your face. Sock rip. Now, I, I gave this one to pasta. And she's like, you know what? It's the greatest fucking life tip. Um, I keep a cavalcade of the same sock. These are all the same sock, and I'll link to these socks. And because I only use one style of sock, and they don't match them into pairs, when I eventually get a sock, let's see if there's any in here that I've missed. When I get a sock that has worn down, and actually a hole has formed, and I'm really good with this, so there's not gonna be any here. That one actually feels pretty new. When you find a sock with a hole in it, first thing you do is rip that fucking sock. Just put your finger in it and rip it. Just trust me on this. Because I used to look at the hole in the sock and go, oh, there's a hole in my sock. I'll just, you know, ignore it. It'll, it'll, it'll be, f no, no, no. This is part of my last endeavor of like, hey, move on with your life. If there's a hole in your sock, rip it open. Just like a hole in my underwear, rip it. Just fucking, and then it's useless, and then you throw it in the garbage. It's part of moving on in life. Spray alcohol. Hold on. Boom, this. This is rubbing alcohol, and you could use 70, or you could use 90%. Um, this is the best thing for cleaning everything. That's actually going to come into play. All right, we're done with you. That's going to come into play with the cleaning glass tool tip. Ooh. I don't know if that's done enough. Lower the temperature down. Keep it going. Um, I clean everything with this. I only have one. It's in my bathroom, and it's annoying. But I can't find this particular All Living Things spray bottle and it's the right size and shape. 
I was at an old man's house and I was like, hey, you have any rubbing alcohol? I need to clean this. And he, was, he got out a bottle from like 1984. It's like, I think we got some rubbing alcohol. How do you not use rubbing alcohol in your daily lives? Buy the thing as a Costco, put it in a spray bottle, spritz, wipe, it evaporates really fast. It doesn't leave any residue. You can spray it on circuit boards, it doesn't hurt it. I, I don't know what else to say about it. I wanna tell you more things about spray alcohol, but it's, it's, it's the nicest cleaning. I clean everything before I review it, before I do facials and everything, all that. Lotion rub plus hydro, this is another double. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I had like bad mosquito bites. I was camping and I got bad mosquito bites. And you put, uh, you know, either aloe vera lotion or you put hydrocortisone cream on it. S step number one, and this I had to. This my father didn't know, but he'll figure. You can't rub lotion into your skin. We went to an allergist and we got all shots. And then my father was like, "Should I rub it into the skin? Should I keep rubbing it?" And the allergist was like, "No, that's not how that works. You can't actually push it into your skin. It has to absorb." So if you have a bad itch or you have something you need to put cream on. Just put a glob of cream on it and leave the glob. Don't keep rubbing it. Don't keep rubbing it because then all you're doing is spreading it out places it doesn't need to be. Leave a big white fucking glob of shit on your whatever it is. Your mosquito bite, pimple, goddamn acne, I don't care. Leave a glob there because then it's going to absorb and you know what's above what's absorbed? More. It just keeps absorbing more. So that's that's number one. Don't think about rubbing it in. You got to keep rubbing it. It doesn't, you're just thinning it out. Put a big glob right on it, done. Plus hydro. So I had all these mosquito bites on my fucking legs and I was like scratching my arm and ah. Hydrocortisone cream is expensive. I have a vial of it somewhere in there. And what I just said about like rubbing it in is great and all, but it doesn't really help the skin that much. So what you do is you get hydrocortisone cream and a really good skin lotion. I use oil of Olay because I'm a big fancy man. Yeah, that's just gonna sit there. I use oil of Olay and I put a, I just take my hand and I squeeze out a nice, you know, two inch circle of hydrocortisone cream out of the tube and then I go squish and I just fill that circle with goddamn lotion and I do this and then I start rubbing. So you actually put the hydrocortisone cream in the lotion. You'll get twice as much liquid or more and you can actually apply it and it'll stay there. You just want more liquid to stay on parts. This is, I mean, this is life hack because I'm like, I need to know this. I need you to know how to fucking deal. Just rub my legs, don't rub it in, just uh, and then your legs stop itching and they get moisturized and it's great. Lint bowl cleaner. This one's hard to describe without showing you, but uh, my dryer, you know, has the lint catch and I clean it. I usually will do a cycle for my dryer and then do another shorter cycle just to like refresh it because some of the really thick stuff needs another like 25 minutes to dry off. And when I go out there to check it, I'll take the lint out the first time I check it. I'll take the lint ball and I'll scoop out the lint and I'm gonna throw a ball of lint. And then what do you do with that is I clean the dryer before I start it again. I take that ball and I just use it to literally wipe down all, you'll, you'll see little lint pieces all around the door and under the door and around the seals and you just go and you wipe that down with that piece of lint because the lint will literally stick to itself. It's the best way to clean lint out of something is with a giant ball of lint. So you take the lint out, you make your ball and you, you clean. You clean your lint ball, you clean it under, under the ball, through the thing and then you take it you, and you throw it away. That's an easy one, right? Third bagels. Now this one sort of started as an accident and I can't really, again, I can't, I have a bagel here, but I'm not gonna, I mean, I could show you, but I'm saving these, make, saving these bagels for tomorrow. How bad are you? If you're as bad as I am, you pull out a bagel and you're like, I'm gonna cut this bagel in half and you line your, 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 your serrated knife up and you go slice, slice, slice. And you end up with a quarter inch on the bottom and three fucking quarters of an inch on top because you're bad, just like I am. So I did that so bad once that I went, you know what, I'm gonna cut this other bigger half in half again. And I had a third bagel, third bagel. And it was the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. It was like when Officer Reese's found Mr. Man with peanut butter, Mr. Man with chocolate, and they crashed. This is like a combination Z Cooks. Oh, by the way, don't forget there is a Z Cooks channel. 
That actually, that's feeling all right. Oh, look at that juicy cheese juice. I'm pretty sure my doctor said have as much cheese juice as you can before you're like 40. So back to third bagels. Cut a bagel in half, you'll be fine. Everyone do the half bagels. But a thin sliced third bagel, more room to butter, you got a little sandwich, then you got like another half sandwich. There's there's no downsides to there's no downsides to a thirded bagel. It's just hard to do. When you go to cut it in half and you fuck up, but then you have to cut the other half. If you're actually aiming to cut a third off and then take the other two thirds and cut that in half, a little more skill required. I would almost say slice it on the table, but I've never been good at that either. I always stand up my bagel to cut it. Right, Chewbacca? Right. We should be erasing these as I'm recording them, because that's what we usually do. Um, blue tack picture. So, that's a photo, hang that's a picture hanging on the wall, that's a picture hanging on the wall. If I hit it, it doesn't move. Same with the one, same with my one in the bathroom here. Oh, that one looked a little bit. <sighs> um, you hang your pictures, and you take blue tack, which is the stuff you're supposed to hang posters. You make a little ball, you put it in the corner where you know it's going to hit. And then you go... <clears throat> you line it up perfectly, and you go... <clears throat> then it's a hanging picture that doesn't swing, doesn't vibrate. It just... It's perfect. You know how many of these paintings and pictures? That was what started it. I had these all set up. The, the, I had to adjust them over and one was a little bit twisted and it would twist every time the subwoofer would shake it would just go uh fucking blue tack in all the corners of all the four girls got them lined up press they don't move they don't move at all so every every painting every paint everything hanging in my fucking apartment and I've got quite a lot all of these got it that's got it these have got it all you got to do is blue tack in the corners Level it and press, and it doesn't move. Will in a second. Um, cold cut rebag. That's what we're doing on. Relax, phone lady. All right. So here's the thing about cold cuts at like the giant, at my local giant. And then cheese falls out of my fridge, and then everyone dies. Cold cuts. Cold cuts. Cold cuts come in these like shitty bags. I never keep that on. And they come with these little Ziploc bags. And you think these little Ziploc bags are good enough, but they're not. And you pull them out, and you're like, oh, we're gonna have cold cuts. And that one rips. Take these cold cuts as soon as you buy them out of their crappy bags. You want some chicken? Yeah, you want some chicken. Chicken for the tubers. Hit her in the Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming, phone. Ah. Oh, that's really good. Now, get a real Ziploc brand Ziploc bag and put it in there. And you could take both few things. I got ham and chicken. Man, my phone is popular. And I just put them in there. And you get a real, I guarantee you, I, Zeos, the motherfuck Pantera, these will last three or four days longer without getting skanky than if you use those shitty fucking Ziploc bags that don't seal and they're always like full, fucked up. No. You may want to be careful mixing cheese and meats in case there's juices and then it'll be in the cheese, but usually the, the meats, they're just perfectly fine. Hold on, Chewbacca. <laughs> Last one, window glass. I have a method for cleaning glass, and I've cleaned these windows on my live stream, and they are perfect. Look at the perfection that is this window. You can't see any imperfections. It's perfect. If I come over here, this window, damn. Also perfect. I mean, damn. How do I do it? And I, 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 met, I built this method because I built this glass table and then I put all these glass shelves together and they're all dusty and you can't stop dust, so I'm not gonna argue that. 
But um, if I have to clean this table, here's the method I've come up with. You get a paper towel, and you could use a, a like, I don't want to say dirty one, but a not brand new one if you keep them like I do, because I think that was a, um, a life hack. Here's my paper bag filled with like once used for water paper towels. Take your paper towel, a drop, a single drop, that might even be too much of um, dishwashing liquid. That much water, just that, don't soak it. And you can either fold this over or keep the soap exposed. What are we cleaning? What can I clean? Oh. I'll clean my oven door even though it's fucking hot. Now you need, here's the thing, um, glass cleaners are not there for grease. Glass cleaners don't clean grease. Degreasers clean grease. And kitchen soap cleans grease. Yes. This is an extra tough case because some of this is baked on. And by the way, this glass is about 200 degrees. So once you've established that you've <clears throat> degreased your glass pretty well throw that away or save it for the next window then you get out real glass cleaner and you have to get out real glass cleaner and i use this stuff if i could link it in the description i will spray away world's best made in the usa hoorah glass cleaner i don't want to spray it on my um food as zeos has been known to eat many a chemical Now is where you get out clean paper towels. You spray, and this one needs a nice big thick foam, and then you add alcohol, rubbing alcohol. The foam disappears. And the reason we're doing this, let me tell you why you do this. You need this to actually clean the glass, and you need to add alcohol to help it evaporate faster. Glass cleaner doesn't evaporate fast enough. How much stuff we got, these are brand new clean. So, inside, you're going to get that foam, you're going to hit it once, booyah, wipe. Now, you can flip it, you should start to feel the paper towel like sticking because it's so dry and this has got some real caked on mess on the other side, but that is still the method. You'll get the squeak, if this was dry enough you'd get the squeak. I'm gonna eventually clean this glass properly. Probably need some like goo gone. But yeah, that's the Zeo's clean method. It's two stages, three liquids. Water with soap, dishwashing liquid with soap, dishwashing liquid with water. Get it all done, get it just everything. That's where you get the main gunk and shit off. Then glass cleaner and cut the glass cleaner with rubbing alcohol and you could use 70 or 90, I think that's 70, whatever I got at Costco. And you do spray and you do spritz and you do wipe. And if you have to go back again, you use just rubbing alcohol. And then you could either use more paper towels or a microfiber towel to really dry it off. Huh. So that's, um, yeah, kinky clothes. Glass is clean, you gotta blow them off. Sock rip, you gotta rip any clothes that you know you should throw out. Just fucking rip them on the spot. Lotion rub, don't rub it in. Add hydrocortisone cream if you have itchy. Lint bowl cleaner is just take the bowl, lint, do that. A third of bagels, I wanna see third bagels be a thing on the cover of Time Magazine. That's the one that's gonna get me to the top. Blue Tack Pictures is, is obvious, you can't tilt the pictures, especially with the cat rubbing her face on it. Cold cut rebag, trust me, use one Ziploc bag once and tell me if it's not better. And window glass, well, uh, well, I just explained that method. Again, links of everything in the description, links to my Patreon in the description, links to Pasta's Patreon in the description, so that Pasta can come here and I could teach her how to clean glass like a proper woman. Um, and I'm gonna eat this now. And then I'm gonna respond to some messages. So yeah, everyone, if you love the tubers, um, like, favorite, and describe some video about animal sh shelters or humanity. Don't, not here. This is not where you do that. Humanity. Shelters or humanity. Sounds like something the goddamn Evangelion would write about. Anyway, I done. Enjoy this. Look for me in part five. Five. Five, Baka.